Kind of tell them what Cotton Candy is. Um, so Cotton Candy is a brand that I created um, along with my with my music career so to be able to, to create merchandise and, you know, to dive into different uh, parts of business like fashion and things like that. So mostly I, I make different type of clothes, you know what I'm saying, shoes and stuff like that. Uh, we got a collaboration with John Soda. You know, we're doing a whole bunch of stuff with the brand. So if you see the, the this is not a cloud, this is a thought bubble. If you see the thought bubble with the colorful teeth, just know that CK Suave and Cotton Candy. All right, man. So let's get into it, man. For people who not familiar with you, tell them where you come from. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Born and raised here. You know what I mean? Live here most of my life. Uh, I lived in Atlanta for about a year or two, but you know, I'm from Cincinnati. And what was your upbringing like here? My upbringing, it was, it was, it, it was pretty much cool. I had everything I needed. You feel me? I had opportunity to, to get what I needed to get. I never had no excuses. I know. You know what I'm saying? I always had the chance to get everything I need. So. Yeah, man. That's what it was. What part of the city you grew up in? Uh, see, I grew up in Avondale, and then I do I did most of my teenage years in high school in North College Hill. All right. So you went to North College Hill? Yes, sir. I did. What was that the Trojans? Yeah, the Trojans. Hey, yeah, man. I remember OJ. I was about to say OJ Mayo, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, I you, seen OJ. OJ used to come through kicking doors down like Bruce Lee, looking for people. Yeah. Was you into any sports or anything in high school? What was your thing? A little bit, a little bit. I liked the um, I liked a little bit of boxing for real. That was my thing. A little boxing here, you know, a little basketball. So but what I was really the sport for me was music, was rapping. That's like my sport. Like yeah. I, I do that like like I got over it. What got you into music, man? Uh, what got me into music was my brother. My brother, Booby. He, he got locked up. When he came home, he was writing. You know what I'm saying? He was writing when he was locked up. So when he came home, he was rapping. And he was using uh, beats. He needed some beats. And all we had was the Nintendo 64. You know what I'm saying? We had um, a few games, Mortal Kombat, WWF. And we would go to the soundtracks of them, of the games and the beats. You know what I'm saying? Then we would play them beats and he would rap to them beats. And that's what learned. That's how I learned. I was producing for him, just recording that stuff on a little recorder. You know what I'm saying? And that's was like, once he went back to jail, I was like, man, that's what I want to do. I, I like how that made me feel. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah, I gotta make my own music. So that's how I got my start. Is it, is your brother older or younger than you? He older than me. Older than me. So him going to jail at a at a young age, I'm sure he was an influence on you. How did that How did that influence you? That influenced me tremendously because he had like a prison type of style to him and I ain't know that that's what that was. So I'm thinking like, hey, I'm rapping trying to be like him because that's my big brother. So when I took that to school and I was rapping that, it put me in a category automatically of like, it was, I was rapping some hard shit. Like imagine, imagine you, you find somebody poetry and you, you, you reciting their poetry like it's yours. It's gonna put you in a category where, you know what I'm saying? That lifestyle, so. I put myself in it. I put myself in a lifestyle before I knew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, another question I had, you know, a lot of people be out here perping, you know, that's a Cincinnati word right there, a Cincinnati legendary word, perping, right, right. not telling the truth. Perpetrators. Yeah, man. A lot of people don't, especially rappers, don't like to admit that they got a job. You right. somebody who have a, you got a regular job and you still out here doing your side, your, well, your real hustle. For sure. Um, talk about the balance of that and the pressure. The balance of that, man, the balance of that is really everything. Like having a job and then, you know what I'm saying? Balancing out your, your music career or, your, or being an entrepreneur. Cause you spend a lot of time and energy into, you know what I'm saying? You putting energy and time into, into going to work. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people get off work, they want to go to sleep. They don't feel like they got accomplished with their life. They feel like they good. I'm doing what I got to do. And for me, that ain't enough. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind. I could have a million dollars and still go to work. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm gonna wake up and feel good that I'm there. 
I don't mind working, you feel me? It give me it give me an extra an extra push, an extra envelope, to, a bag to, you know what I'm saying, secure my next bag, you feel me? So I like the discipline that come with that. But the, the struggle of it is the energy. You know what I'm saying? You get off work, you might be tired, you don't want to do all the stuff, you know what I'm saying? You might not want to do all the stuff you thought you was gonna do. But that's what separates the doers from the people that just wanna watch it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's, that's what I found myself doing. That's definitely a balance, man. A lot of people like try to down talk people having jobs, but man, being an entrepreneur, especially a rap entrepreneur, is not cheap. Nah. And you have to have a way to fund it. For sure. Facts. But you gotta you, you this is your dreams, yo. So it don't just automatically come with money. Like you gotta you gotta find your niche and your way to make your bread. You know what I'm saying? You don't just come into the game and make money off of it. This is your business. It's like you start from the ground. When I buy a beat, I'm like an entrepreneur that's buying a product. You know what I'm saying? Then I take that, my song, I have to put my lyrics with that song and make the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Now I've got a product. Now I got to take that product to the masses, to the people, with hopes that they, that, they, that they pick it up. You know? So as an artist, you're taking a big risk, just like an entrepreneur would when they first start up a business. Yeah. What's, um, What's one of the biggest lessons you learned just being out here hustling for yourself? One of the biggest lessons I learned was to not hesitate on, on, on things I want to do. Like, just to, to have a mentality to go for it and do 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 what it is that you, that you want to do. Picture it, see it, and go for it. Yeah. Um, that's really been, that's been my biggest thing. Getting with like-minded people, you know what I'm saying? to be able to create something, maybe a great event, a great performance or something like that. And we, I live in that moment. I live in the moments where where we singing or dancing, whatever it is we doing. In our art, I live in them oh in them moments. It's where I'm where I feel like a million a billionaire. Nelly's first song was about a drive-by. I'm going right, down, man. down, baby. Yo street in a, in a Range Rover, sweet sweeper, uh -huh. cock back, ready to let it go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. he made it sound so, so happy. Yeah. He did. That that you never even noticed. Like, oh my God, this man is doing a drive-by. Yeah. So um, some of your younger rap days, who was you listening to? Who influenced you? Who put that? Who put that bug on you? Like, oh, it's over. Oh yeah, for sure. Number one, I, that's that's what it's called. Number one, Nelly. That was the CD. I, I remember listening to that song. I am number one, sitting on the on my mama couch with the Walkman, and I'm like, man, I, I like I like his style. You know what I'm saying? And that's what got me started. When we moved out to North College Hill, I started listening to Lil Wayne and you know what I'm saying Twister, Jay Z's American Gangster. You know that came out when I was in high school. Really, <laughs> so. That's that, the type of era that we came from. That's funny you say that about Nelly. I was interviewing Prince and uh, Prince City. Oh yeah. No, yeah, excuse yeah, me, yeah. Prince and Natty. Oh yeah. My yeah. bad. And uh, he was talking about how um, how Nelly influenced him, uh -huh. and he made me realize like Nelly's first song was about a drive by. I'm All going right, down, yeah. down, baby. Yo Street in a, in a Range Rover, sweet sweeper, uh -huh. cock back, ready to let it go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. he made it sound so. So happy yeah, he did. that that you never even noticed. Like, oh my God, this man is doing a drive by. Yeah, it ain't sound like no drive by. Now that you now that you say that though, <laughs> go listen it. to that song, bro. Yeah, I will. I will when I get as soon as I get in the whip, you listen to it. You gonna be zoned out. Yeah, I fuck with Nelly though. Yeah, man. So, um, what what you dropping now? What what type? What has your music style changed in any way? Nah, my music my music style ain't really changed. I say I say it evolved. I'm just over time, you know. Things change with my life, so that's how you know that's how my music changed. But right now I got a tape called Billy Low. Mixtape I'm working on. Carried by, it probably got about 12, 13 songs on it. Mixture of hip hop, a little RB. Okay, so you singing too. A little bit, a little bit. I'm harmonizing. I wanna yeah. call it, I wanna call it singing.
I got kind of a deep question, man. We talking about being an entrepreneur. How does fear play into you being an entrepreneur? Is it a motivator? Is it? Uh, well, yeah, fear, fear. I feel like as an entrepreneur, you got different type of fears. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of that's a. It's a I want to say it's a vague, a vague word, but it's a big word. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you got, you got, as a person, you got fears of yourself. That that's gonna boil down to any point of business that you go to. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like the way I handle my fears most of the time is that I like to to challenge them. You know what I'm saying? Something that I see that that bother me, like why why couldn't I do this or why didn't I talk to this person? I try to make sure, like, well, I'm gonna talk to this person. Or next time I'll make sure I talk to two people. You know what I'm saying? To make up for for the fear of maybe I was scared of talking to people. You know what I'm saying? So the only way to balance out to, to beat fear is with experience. And the subconscious mind resonates success with experience. Mm -hmm. So that's how I break my fears by getting my hands dirty. See, the reason I asked that is because I know for me, um, I used to be stagnated by fear. It used to keep me from doing stuff. And I learned that now I use the fear to, to propel me into doing stuff because you really can't just be scared of stuff. You got to, anything that you, you find fear in, you kind of got to run towards it to see if it's real. You ever seen the movie It? I feel like it stands for imaginary things. The way that they was, the way that they kill it by not believing in fear. Right. That was deep. It was. It's it interesting. Was. Like, and the more that they weren't scared of their fears, the less power that it had over them. Only reason the clown killed people is because they were scared. Mm -hmm. So, fear is a big. It play a part in everybody. Right. But right. will it keep you stagnant, or will it, or will it motivate you? Is the real. The real question, man. Right. So, sure. don't be fear. We just don't be fearful. We just had a um, an episode mm -hmm. of the Nam Time About Radio Show. Right. Um, action cures fear. Facts. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I was just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Action cures fear. Yep. By experience, you learn. And 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 that I see. I lot. Of, I do a lot of uh, a lot of studying on psychology and the subconscious mind and the conscious mind. You know what I'm saying? And I noticed that, like, the subconscious mind is the mind that that that, that tells us things. You feel me? You know what I'm saying the conscious mind is the one that, that that protects. So basically, if I if I said if I was talking to my child and I, I called him stupid or something like that, the conscious mind gonna hear that and then it's gonna resonate in the subconscious mind, which later on in time they either gonna remember that dad called me stupid and they gonna feel stupid. You know what I'm saying? Because they've been programmed and all that. So what I do for me, and of course my son, is I program good things into his subconscious mind and tell him he's smart and stuff like that. So for myself though, I do a hypnosis. And it's called Lion Confidence Champion Mindset Hypnosis, where it changes my um, subconscious thoughts and negative thoughts and turn them into positive thoughts. That way I can, you know what I'm saying, see my dreams and, and go for them more. Explain how that worked. So, um, it's, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you ever seen Get Out? Yeah, I didn't really understand it, but... Okay, so you know the part where she was hypnotizing him, right? Yeah. Hypnotizing him with the cup. Yeah. So basically, before she, before they was pro trying to program him, she was hypnotizing him, getting his rhythm of his heart to slow down and his breathing to slow down, just like if you was in a sleeping phase, you feel me? Because that's when, that's when our subconscious mind is the most vulnerable, you know what I'm saying? So, because conscious mind is now gone, so we say we in a sleeping phase, like you're going through meditation. The deeper that you breathe, you know what I'm saying, the slower your heart rate goes, so then, you know, you're simulating sleep. So imagine you being asleep, you know what I'm saying, and then you become, uh, you, you get deeper into sleep. You just get deeper into being relaxed and breathing and focusing on breathing. You feel me? You just focus on breathing and relaxing. And then, as your body has become completely relaxed, it's when you get plugged in with positive thoughts, confident thoughts, champion mindset thoughts into your subconscious mind, which will change what you do. It changes how you think. You know what I'm saying? It changes your actions. Like it changes how I think about people. You know what I mean? Like it changed my life. It's kind of like 
it's kind of like having a father I never had or the, mm. or the coach I never had telling me the things I needed to be successful. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. I feel like that was a, you know, uh, a sign from God, something I needed. You know what I'm saying? To be able to, to be the person that I need to be to be able to help people that need help. I got a theory that majority of people don't know how to breathe. And that's why anxiety is so high. You ain't never felt cooler than, than being able to take deep breaths, deep cyclic breaths, cycles of breaths. Like you can breathe into your feet. Like it's a coolness and it's a, it's just yourself is in breathing. You can find yourself in breathing, man. Right. Like it's interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting. I, man, I would tell people to go out and just try to like, Take deep breaths and practice. Yeah. Practice breathing. For sure. It's therapeutic. It's therapeutic for sure. You can heal your you can heal yourself with that. Yes. Definitely can heal yourself with breathing. It's good for your mind. All that. Taking a deep breath when you when you feel, you know, stagnated or overwhelmed. Or frustrated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's directly linked to the heart, just like the music. Like the beat of the drum. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's linked to the heart. So uh, today, man, I want to play a game, and uh, it's called Rappers Be Acting. Rappers Be Acting, okay. It's, it's going to be about, this game is about rappers that have acted, movies, TV shows, stuff like that. Right. And uh, see if you can answer a couple questions for me, man. You ready? Yeah, let's get it. All right, man. I don't think you, you was born, what, what year was you born? 91. Mmm, yeah, you, was, you were early enough for this, man. Okay, Rappers Be Acting, man. Uh-huh. Question one. In the movie Set It Off, what was Queen Latifah's character name? How long I got? Mm, you got 30 seconds. All right. Uh, Stony. I know you got Stony, you got Frankie. Uh, dang, you got me out there. I just got here smoking a blunt. They ju- it just came on the other day, man. No. I'll give you a hint. Also in the 90s, there was a Jamaican lady who was a fortune teller and they had the same name. Her tagline was, call me now. <laughs> Cleo. Yeah. Oh man, don't do me like that. How dare it take you that long you to answer that? You should've never gave me that clue. Should've <laughs> let me, should've, let, should've fed me to the wolves. Yeah, man. No more clues like that. <laughs> so you got you got one right, man. Let's see how you're nah, doing. That don't count. That don't count. Hey, I was trying to give you some credit. It's all good. <laughs> Next question. This rapper from the rowdy group Onyx slammed his role as Blade in the 2006 TV Stop series. Stop playing with me, man. Can I get a napkin? Because it's sticky fingers. Yeah, yes, bro. Sir. Come on, bro. You know I was going to know this. Yeah, man. So you got what you got? Two out of two out of three so far. That's what we can call it. That. Yeah, man, you're doing better than the Bengals. Oh man, uh, that's fired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see if you can name five Will Smith movies, not including. No, nah, you can't do that. Not including. You can't do that. Independence Day. Nah, one. See. Bad you boys. Them for me. You name them for me. No, I'm saying you got to name five, not including these. Okay, I know. I Independence know Day. Fair. Bad Boys uh-huh. and Men in Black. Okay, cool. That's E Z. Hancock. You know what I'm saying? That would be the first one. Suicide Squad. You know what I'm saying? Then you got uh Seven Pounds. Mm. Then you got that movie where he had the raggedy fro with the with the kid and uh. shit. <laughs> Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah. One more. Man, make, let's make this a spectacular one. Cause we already got the one with Hank. Okay. Will Smith. Oh yeah. Well now nah, he wasn't in that. Damn, the last one and I froze up. He got a gang of movies too, man. Come on. You said I can't pick what again? Independence Day, Bad Boys, or Men in Black. Cause those too easy. Oh yeah, and Hitch. Hitch, okay. That's it. Okay. That was, that was a throwaway. So you did it, man. I did it. <laughs> real quick. Good tour. Cause I keep seeing you. Yeah, man, we both be out promoting a lot, man. For sure. 
always is this that's important man tell them about your guerrilla promotion man because when you were so especially when you can it's entrepreneurs and then it's entrepreneurs with teams right we really i feel like we at the point where we really ain't really got a team together yet mm -hmm. so we out here just moving solo solopreneur right. kind of tell mm -hmm. Tell about tell about that man. Some of the difficulties and the hardships you face in just trying to get out here and promote your brand. Well, man, I gotta say, um, being an entrepreneur and, and mostly doing there, a lot of the things myself, I learned a lot. You know what I'm saying I learned a lot of things, um, the things I, sh I feel like I could have learned faster if I had a team. You know what I'm saying a, 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 a more structured team. But you know, it, it come it come and it go. You know what I'm saying you find good people and they come and go. So I just make sure I stick to what I got to do as an entrepreneur for myself. You hear me? Not but supporting it's... that you say that you learn a lot, man, because, like, you need to learn a lot, man, for real, on your own. Because if you're starting a business, let's say you're starting a restaurant, you want to know how to run the register even though you own the restaurant. So when it come up short, you'll be like, nah, I know why it's short because you can't, can't nobody really pull the wool over your eyes. And once you learn something for yourself, can't nobody take that knowledge away from you. Right. But, um... I, I see I see you I see you posting a lot about uh MTV. Explain what that's all about. For sure. So man, I've been waiting to get my, my music video Tornado Pockets on MTV since last year. You feel me? And that worked out a little here and that worked out a little there because we got it aired in LA, but I didn't get my Cincinnati air, so I was a little sorry about that. But I ain't let that stop me from reaching my next goals. I kept going. A lot of times as an artist you might find something that somebody might might sell you a pipe dream and you go up, you know what I'm saying? Then when it don't work, you go down and some people don't come back from coming, you know what I'm saying, from going down. Me, I won't, I done learned enough so that when I do, you know what I'm saying, go down, I come back up. It's it, you know what I'm saying? So I stay up. Uh, as far as that though, I have to I have to reiterate it to yeah. you. What you mean? Well, I kind of get high and smoke a lot of weeds. So I forgot the question. <laughs> Favorite weed? Favorite strain? Favorite strain? Pressure. Gas. Uh, birthday cake tastes good, man. I gotta say that. What you smoking out of? Oh, uh, man. <laughs> Here we go. Me? I'm an Optimo smoker. I ain't gonna perk. You know why I like Optimos? Because when you smoke it with somebody that talk too much, the Optimo will go out. Mm. Like it's, and it, oh, can I see the lighter? That mean if you ask for the lighter when you smoking the Optimo, that mean you was talking too much. Mm. A lot of people just be talking so they can hold the weed long. They're trying to distract you. Exactly. Oh, see, I ain't know that. Uh, I ain't that type. I didn't know you let me in on the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, ain't nothing more aggravating than somebody just holding and you like. So you just gonna keep talking? I don't even care what you're talking about no more, honestly. Right. And they be knowing. I think they be knowing too. Like they like finessers. They definitely know, man. They definitely know. Yeah. They definitely know, man. You gonna edit that part out of being being high? Forgot the question, or you gonna keep that? I mean, I might keep it, man. It don't matter. We can get back to the question. I remembered it. <laughs> okay, what was it? The entrepreneurs and how it was <laughs> how it was hard for us and shit like that. It be hard, especially when you smoke too much weed. Forget shit. That's why I got the Apple Watch. It helped me remember all the reminders and stuff like that. You ever feel like maybe you need to stop smoking? Maybe it just to maybe organize or balance out a little bit more. Do you ever feel the pressure? Sometimes I used to a lot until I got the Apple Watch. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm like, why well, I need to remember? I could just tell my watch to tell me. You know what I'm saying? Continue my lifestyle. What did you find yourself forgetting the most? Uh, I was forgetting dates and like meetings and stuff like that. Like I'm happy you hit me up. I plan for this. But you know, sometimes you forget things. And that don't even just be because of smoking weed. I mean, it just be because you forget shit. Yeah. I mean, especially with our busy lives as, as entrepreneurs and just being grown. You right. Story. So we was talking about uh, favorite ways to relieve stress, man. Right. And what did you just say? I said, man, listen, I'm gonna keep it 100 with you, bro. I'm a connoisseur, um, a marijuana connoisseur, and I smoke a lot of weed. So I forget things like 
fast. Now, this is a serious situation, you feel me? COVID-19 is, is a very serious situation. But personally, how I deal with it, you know what I'm saying, is how I deal with life, period. Ain't nothing changed. It, it, a lot of things that change as far as safety precautions, but as far as how I move, I still, I still, I stay to myself. You know what I'm saying? I smoke, I drink, I, but I stay out the way. I, I, I make sure I ain't being no trouble to nobody that ain't no trouble to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I keep my, I make sure my family stay healthy, we stay safe, and stay calm. It ain't, it ain't hard to do that. You know, it's, it's within. Like mm -hmm. the eye of the storm, the storm going around me. Mm -hmm. So that's hard right now. All right, man. So we came to the end of the interview, man. Appreciate you sliding through. Um, but this is a game I like to play with everybody. This always happens, man. This game is called This or That. I give you an option, options, and then you tell me either this option or that option, man. Sound good? Yeah. You ready? Let's get it. Oh, yeah. I already know the answer to this one, man. It's the wrong answer for you, but Gold Star or Skyline? Oh, man. You already know what it is, man. Skyline. Big Cincinnati. No, man. Cat or dog? Big dog. All right, it's wash day. You ain't got no clean clothes. Dirty drawers or you going commando? Commando? Jesus. <laughs> okay, PlayStation or Xbox? PS5. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what it is. <laughs> cookie or brownie? Ah oh, man, cookie. Movie or Netflix? Movie. Title or Spotify? Spotify. Beer or liquor? Liquor. Cash money or no limit? No limit. Oh, you tripping, bro. <laughs> Martin or Fresh Prince? What? Martin? Definitely. Prince or Michael Jackson? What? Come on, bro. Don't do that to me. That's a, that's a terrible question. Personally, for me, I'm going to say Mike. If my mama listens to this interview, she going to beat me up for that. But, you know. Prince was a beast in the studio, he bro. He, he didn't need guy. nobody. He didn't need nobody. He was that guy. Late nights or early mornings? Uh, late nights. Jordans or Yeezys? Yeezys. All right, man. I don't know if you smoke cigarettes, but Newport Kings or Newport 100s? Box or soft pack? <laughs> I don't smoke cigarettes, bro, so I'm going to just say, I don't know. I ain't got nothing for that. Just pick the 100s because that's the <laughs> 100 in a, in, a, in a box, man. People who got jobs, they love cigarettes in a box, so when they come out on break, all their cigarettes ain't broke. <laughs> What's going on? Biggie or pot? Pot. Burrito or bowl? Burrito. Favorite TV dad, Carl Winslow or Phillip Banks? Phillip Banks. Bye bye bye. Bye bye bye. <laughs> okay, you choosing your chick. Would you rather have a chick with an ugly face and a nice body or a nice face? In a, in, a, in a terrible body, an ugly body. Ooh wee. Ooh wee. Nah, she gotta have, a, she gotta at least kinda be pretty. You feel me? You gotta be look better than me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, Popeyes or KFC biscuit? Popeyes, come on, man. Definitely. It's delicious, but it's the driest biscuit on earth. It is. You can't, you can't come in without no drink. <laughs> Light skin on Viv or dark skin on Viv? Oh man, dark skin on Viv. Come on, bro. Yeah, man. Come on, man. They got rid of her. They, got, it, they sent her up out of here. And the last question is, if I could give you $1,000 right now, would you choose the $1,000 of your current relationship? Ooh, wait, I keep my relationship. Hey, that's what's up, man. Shout out to that. Wait, relationship with God? With your girl. <laughs> nah, hey, I hope you wouldn't take $1,000 over your relationship with God. You said relationship. Yeah. Relationship, <laughs> man. I'm, I'm keeping my shorty, you feel me? That's what's up, man. So, yeah, man, this is another episode. This is actually going on type shit, man. So, this yeah. is the type shit podcast, man. We coming back, man, for the 99 and the 2000, man. It's 2020. We almost in 2021. We don't know who about to be the president, but it really don't matter, man. We in the eye of the storm, man. The storm going around us, man. CK Suave. This has been another episode. Type shit podcast. Now, I'm talking about, yo, where can they find you at? You can find me everywhere at CK Suave, C K S U A V E, and my website, cottoncandy.club. The candy spelled with a K. Yes, sir, man. We out of here.
goodbye.